Is a phone's radiation dangerous? It's really, really important to know if radiation emitted by phones is dangerous or not. Because roughly 5 billion humans use mobile phones. The word radiation evokes fear in us, doesn't it? Let's have a look at the facts to get a basic understanding of radiation. On whether small doses of radiation can cause harm to us, it depends on which kind of radiation you're talking about, which is divided into two types, as ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. The ionizing radiation, which includes UV, X-rays, and gamma rays, has enough energy in a single photon, which is nothing but a quantized minimum packet of light, to strip the electrons from atoms and disintegrate the chemical bonds. Because of its carcinogenic properties, which adversely affects DNA, we are advised to wear a lead vest when getting an x-ray treatment at the dentist or to use sunblock when you go out in the sun. While one cannot totally avoid natural radiation such as radon, cosmic rays, and man-made radiation like x-rays, it is highly recommended to minimize exposure when possible. The non-ionizing radiation, sources of which include a large variety of daily use items, such as visible light from light bulbs, infrared light from an oven and from people, gigahertz light from Wi-Fi, megahertz lights to and from our cell phones, and radio waves hitting our car radio, are not harmful in small doses because one photon does not have enough potency to ionize atoms or break apart molecules. However, in very large doses, the non-ionizing radiation can be harmful. For example, a visible light laser, at least several hundred times more powerful than a legal laser pointer. It is essential to note that the power emitted by a cell phone varies over the course of a call, up to 2 watts at the start of a call, which barely lasts a few seconds, and then drops down to 0.02 watts during the optimal operation. As smartphones are not just used to make calls, but for various purposes, we take into account the extreme case. Between 450 and 2000 megahertz, matter and light interact via the electric field component of light, which is quite different from ionizing radiation. Especially in an oscillating electric field, the polar molecules rotate which manifests as dissipation, in example heating, which is nothing but the same operating principle of microwave ovens of dielectric heating. Also, it should be noted that while a cell phone emits very low wattage, a microwave oven emits 700 watts of power, which is hundreds of times more than the maximum a cell phone emits. To further elucidate, let's consider the steady state power emission of 0.02 watts to heat up the body by 1 degree Celsius when the whole volume is exposed. Let's assume the body mass at 100 kilograms, which is composed entirely of water. In this case, if all the radiation was absorbed and used to heat it up, it would take 20,900,000 seconds or 241 days to heat you up by one degree. That's right, 241 days. However, to mitigate this heating, we are fortunate to have metabolic processes in our body. The recent study conducted to determine the carcinogenic effects of cell phones on rats should be taken with a pinch of salt when associating its results with humans. In the study, rats were exposed to radiation power densities of 0, 1.5, 3, or 6 watt per kilogram. This is similar to a 100 kilogram human exposed to 600 watts microwaved. By no means are we exposed to that degree of microwave radiation. After listening to this, many people would still argue that phone radiation is dangerous. However, current studies show by no means is it a cancer-causing radiation. If you like Inkstall's edutainment, then please don't hesitate to support us at patreon.com inkstall.